if it looks just, this incredible you could scuba dry, dive in this pond. Yes. You could scuba dive in this and, pond. And we're gonna. We're gonna scuba dive. We are gonna scuba dive in this pond. Well, I don't need scuba gear, but I'll be in the pond. Yeah, I'm gonna throw you in. <laughs> <laughs> it's spotless and nothing's running, right? Like, he's got a pump over there just recirculating some water so it doesn't get stagnant, which so, isn't doing much for the other 95% of the pond. You and I have done some awesome projects yeah. lately. This one, this one might be my Don't favorite. say that, don't say that. I know, I don't want to say that, I, I, I love it. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, there is no better teacher than nature. We always say that, right? Having the opportunity to come out here to Forest Falls and just hike through some of the natural waterfalls that exist here in Southern California, I think it's giving us both some inspiration. Well, and just before we start building an epic waterfall yeah. off the side of Mass Mountain over there, right? Like, this is just so cool. And behind us, a giant 40-foot tree that goes from here all the way across, mapping the lay perfectly horizontal, but look at all the waterfalls it's coming through. It's actually making that waterfall yeah. right there. It's the whole weir stone. Right. Weir log. It's been here forever too. Look how like weathered yeah. and aged it is. That waterfall there has probably been there for quite a while. The fact that it fell and landed in such a perfect spot, yeah. <laughs> that's nature, right? But then look at like some of the principles we always talk about, you know, like fewer rocks is better. So big rock, big rock, waterfall in between. Big rock, big rock, waterfall in between. Big rock, big rock, waterfall in between. This is why we do this. Another great example of the things we try to replicate, the water just rolling over different rocks and onto the next one. Even though those are smooth, we need a lot of volume to make that happen. We try to think about that stuff and how to replicate it. And having the ability to actually see it in person gives you so many ideas to be able to do this in somebody's yard. Another thing that Brian and I always like to shoot for is like when we do these washouts or these beach areas, to be able to have it so that it's just such a subtle transition into the water. I mean, the water starts all the way back here and it doesn't get deep to a good like three feet out and it's just like a big cut right there with just cobbles and you got the waterfall that's coming into it right this way so you can see what happens in nature all that heavy torrent of water comes in it starts washing out and digging out right in the center and then it shallows out and starts the next waterfall these are things that we try to replicate Brian perfect example of things that we normally don't like right yeah is this waterfall we consider that like a tongue rock where it just sticks out in front of everything. And normally you can't make them look good unless you have a serious volume of water flowing. That That's over 100,000 gallons an hour. Absolutely. I mean, that water is thick coming off that. But it looks awesome. And that's the thing, like we try to make things look really perfect, right? Yeah. But in nature, that boulder came down, just landed however it lands. That one there landed behind it and it forced the water to come over that tongue rock. And without that huge volume of water, it wouldn't have looked great. But the way it's flowing now is just fantastic. But really same thing, right? Big rock on one side, big rock on the other, something in between. Where I'm more inspired by with this wall is the way it finishes with like the beach-like areas over in here. You know, the shallow, the deep pockets. Like look at how shallow it is over yeah. in here. Here, and that and deep that's pocket a deep, right deep there. Pool right there. And that's that's formed by all that heavy water coming through and just scouring out that the cobble and the earth and pushing it further downstream. And then you got stuff like this, Brian, that will just never be replicated. Oh wow, that's so cool. Obviously the waterfalls are incredible, right? As we just continue to hike all the way up. But even stuff like this blows me away. Check out the tree roots. Just totally exposed here. Climbing over all of these rocks. Just amazing. Get on the photo, you're screwing up my video. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is so awesome. So cool. I love how there's like so much of the root structure exposed and the trees still live. Brian from Team Aquascape. I am back in Yucaipa, California. We are back here, when I say we, Jack Harju from Atlantis Water Gardens and myself are back out here at Yucaipa and we are working on the second phase of that fire pond. Last night we came in here, check out the footage from last night. We were so, so excited to see how great it looked last night. Jack. We're back. We got in a little late tonight, but look at that view. I'm so blown the away right now. Best thing about getting in late is seeing what he gets to see every single night. This is like a nice clear night. It is absolutely breathtaking. There's some kind of like UFO like in my, uh, hmm. yeah, well. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jack, are you there? Take me away. <laughs> <laughs> 
such an incredible view. We are so excited. We just came and looked at the rock. Not that I can really show you guys, but there's at least 300 tons of stone. At least 300 tons. Right here. Monster. You can't see my finger, but there's 300 tons of stone here. There's some monsters sitting over here, which was probably another 200 tons just in here. Matt doesn't even know we're here yet. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of. <laughs> it's kind of funny that we pull up and we don't even go ring the doorbell. We just go let's look go at the, the pond rocks. right away in the rocks. But this is why we do it. We're oh this is God. what we're excited about. I am I think, so excited. I mean, just Brian, look at the. Uh, you probably can't see anything right now. We can see your silhouette. All you see is Jack holding something. We have to come back tomorrow morning and do the exact same thing. Freaking amazing! But it hides a giant excavator back there. <laughs> so incredible so guys we're gonna walk you back <laughs> to the view of the pond from about i don't know 20 feet above it would well, you say about 20 feet well you gotta get past 15 feet the, uh, the gigantic glacier boulders <laughs> all right let's go let's check those out all right guys we're coming over the hill all right wait the house wait. You'll, the you'll house is over there the shadow of these wait, 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 wait. Boulders over here. so jack's head's bobbing off in the distance you can see the silhouette of blue down below let's follow jack before we go show you guys the pond jack yeah we can hear the sound and see the the blue water down there. You're standing next to a big boulder. Throw, have, throw your light on really quickly. Wait, Let's see I if that works. No, I have no idea how on earth he got this thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a monster. Wait, the, but there's one even bigger behind Wait, wait, go it. stand next to it so people get an idea of how big that boulder is. I'm right here at this rock. I'm telling oh you, my it has God. To be seven tons, eight tons. I don't know. It's humongous. It's... But there's one even bigger behind it. Like, look at, look, well, you just walk through, like, this is like walking through Egypt and the freaking. <laughs> well, look, at, look at this thing. Oh. And if they look this good in the middle of the night, oh. do you know what they're going to look like tomorrow? I got to be honest. Like, so you and I were here. Uh, we did a week out here. We did a serious amount of production. 300 plus tons of boulders we set in the pond. We killed ourselves, right? We were both dreading coming out here because we knew the amount of work that was going to be involved. But as soon as he showed up and we saw what he got accomplished and then what's here to work with, it's like a new wave of energy just entered our bodies. Like, I can't wait to get up tomorrow and get start working. It's literally if he said, let's fire up the machines let's now. No, I'm we, ready to go right we, now. Both of us would be like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. We are so inspired by the amount of work that he has done to get all of these massive boulders and then wait till you see what this pond looks like with what, about six feet of water in it? About five feet of water. Five, five feet of water in it, three to four more feet to go. We're guessing. And look at how wait, incredible look, he's got this looks. All the bags laid out, right? You think he's excited? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at all the rocks. He's got everything ready to go. Hey, Jack, I don't think sleeping in tomorrow is an option. No, it's not an option. Right? <laughs> we, we might have to skip Starbucks. <laughs> He's got right? a machine ready to go, like this gigantic thing, right? You're talking about a 100,000-pound machine. Jack, how many miles do you think this bad boy's got on it? <laughs> like, I want to know what he hit to put a big hole in the back of it. <laughs> this is like solid That's steel. That's a rhino tooth. Yeah, that might be a triceratops, yeah. I think. <laughs> but, Brian, look at this. Look at this. This is crazy. It's so incredible. It's like a mini Lake Tahoe. It is. It's exactly like a mini Lake Tahoe. It looks like a glacier boulder pond. What makes it look like a mini Lake Tahoe is not just the color of the water. Obviously, yeah. that blue water helps a lot. Imagine this with three feet of water in here amongst all these gigantic boulders. You this can't see any. There's a waterfall any. coming off this You high. can't see any of this. More lights in here. Like, I didn't realize how many lights you put in here. Yeah, we. I spent some time lighting this thing up. Look, I love all the cove lighting. Just the big boulders. It's just so... If this was the final depth, awesome. I would be ecstatic with it. Yeah. And it still has to come all the way up to about there, which may take away from the look of it. Like it's just, if, so. if, if it looks this incredible, you could dry. Scuba dive in this pond. Yes. You could scuba dive in this and, pond. And we're gonna. We're gonna scuba dive. We are gonna scuba dive in this pond. Well, well I don't need scuba gear, but I'll be in the pond. Yeah, I'm gonna throw you in. <laughs> <laughs> It's spotless and nothing's running, right? Like he's got a pump over there just recirculating some water so it doesn't get stagnant, which so, isn't doing much for the other 95% of the pond. The main reason Matt wanted to build this pond was because they get wildfires up here. And he's like, I want to build a pond that can have at least 100,000 gallons of water so that we get wildfires. We'll show you tomorrow there's a whole pumping system for just the firefighting aspect of this. This is going to be over 100,000 gallons, easy. And I can tell you that makes him happy. The way this looks right now like he sent us a bunch of pictures he's giddy about this thing i'm giddy about this 
this thing. I love it. I absolutely love I'm it. I'm past giddy about it. Like, There's not too many ponds that make me jealous. You and I have done some awesome projects yeah. lately. This one, this one might be my Don't favorite. say that. Don't say I that. I know. I don't want to say that. I, I, I love it. It's not better. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, oh my God. It's so beautiful. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. Just stare at it for a couple seconds, and then tomorrow morning, I'll be right back here. And now I'm down here this morning. The sun is rising, and it looks just as good in the day as it did last night. Matt and his team finished off everything so nice. It looks so good. So let me show you a little bit of what got done, and then more importantly, what we're going to work on the next week while we're out here. so much got done he finished the wall in over there and if you can remember there was going to be some stone steps that came down we'll get over there and get a little bit closer to it but that looks amazing there's going to be this whole patio with like a pavilion and stuff over the top of it it's going to look so good we had finished all this edge work last time we were here but he came in finished the intake bay so water comes up just below the top of this rock right here sweeps all the debris in we we'll circulate around in here and then he can come in and you know there's like two feet 18 inches of water in this space and you can just scoop this stuff out with the net so they finished all the edging all the way around this is going to get a gorgeous like stone staircase that comes down with a nice wide meandering pathway over to this space here's that close-up of that wall with the really cool stone stairs look over to that side where I was standing before you finished that wall which looks amazing and then there's gonna be a cantilever deck that comes out and you'll be able to jump off of that deck down into about nine feet of water speaking of water he's got this thing about five feet full right now there's over 50,000 gallons of water in this so when this thing's full all the way to the top there's gonna to be well over a hundred thousand gallons of water it's just gonna look amazing I'm so excited to be back here last time we had some incredible stone to work with you can see how Gorgeous the pond looks behind me with only five feet of water and imagine when it's all the way up to the top How good it's gonna look Matt went out. He was super busy while we were gone Got even more stone than we had last time and we're gonna start working on the waterfall and the wetland area So hopefully have a section of this thing running by the time we leave here last time we had some obstacles There was mudslides. There was bad weather. It was freezing everything else this time. It's sunny and the rattlesnakes are out. So we've already seen a couple little tiny ones. We're supposed to be very mindful. So I'm guessing this is not the proper attire for rattlesnake weather, but nonetheless, we're gonna have a very, very good time when we're out here. I can't wait to show you guys the progress of that waterfall. In fact, let's go over there so we can just kind of recap some of the stuff that we did last time. So if you can remember, we kind of choked some of this stuff down. Now water is gonna come up to just below the top of that rock. And then we choke things down so as that water comes off the waterfall, it'll rip through this whole area, really helping just push that debris that way. We set that frame rock, which is well over my head. And so today, Jack and I are gonna try to get the rest of the rock set in here, get this waterfall built, finish up in this area so we can continue to fill the pond up to its desired height. I'm guessing today with 100 degree temperatures and my attire, I may be swimming in this thing by the end of the day. Jack, man. And we're back. Listen, I love pond building, right? But did you show them the two rattlesnakes we found this morning? <laughs> no. Like, I don't want to die for this, but I'm kind of worried. Like, I see all this high grass, and they're small. They're like this big. Jack, just take one for our, for no, our fans. No, I'm not Everybody wants to see what it's like to get bit by a rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they don't. They don't want to see that. All right, so remember how long it took us to set this rock? The strap broke. The strap roll, massive. What do you think, like seven tons? Oh, easily. It's massive. And so I, I love this rock. It's got a natural shoulder in it, right? You can get water coming off of here. And I'm 5'10", this is almost as high as my head. So there's gonna be two and a half feet of water in here. I can see kids coming through here and getting underneath this waterfall. Now we've got a blanket to make it work. We wanna come in here, we're talking about doing some layering, maybe something lower, and then step up where we get a big flat rock across this way. So what that's gonna do is feed water onto this, and then we get our water drop down here and hit this rock and kind of go that way so you can kind of walk up in here get this on your shoulders but it's giving like a lot of layers inside the waterfall like you like that white water crashing and then when you're looking like over that wall down to here it's going to be spectacular then we got to go back like we're going to cut this grade 
probably about like six inches below this yep. height of this rock. Create a pooling area back here, and then we'll get another waterfall kind of feeding like this. And then up behind that is going to be like the main pool before the gigantic waterfall coming out of the wetland filter. We want to set this up so that you can actually walk down here and have like a patio space or something where they can take pictures. That would be an amazing spot with that big waterfall in the background. And then also just continue that nature path through here. So it's just like a whole interactive experience around this whole pond. It's going to be so awesome. Yeah. So this is that pathway that they're talking about. We're going to create, you know, some steps or something coming up from there down into here. We want them to swim down into this space. It's going to be awesome. Not quite a hundred, but I've got the, about the best hat ever, right? Don't you forget it. <laughs> We're moving right along. Finish the waterfall in here. So we've got our frame rock sitting here. We've got a spillstone here. We're gonna add a couple more to get water to really come off of this. Right now we're doing what we call a cut. And so we're digging all of this soil back. So yeah, I don't know if you can see, there's a red line back up in there. So we'll cut all this back. That'll create another pool before it drops over this way. So the idea is you dig everything lower than your spillstone, and whatever depth you want to dig that at creates the depth of the pool back behind the spillstone. So you can go two inches, you can go two feet if you wanted more of a plunge pool. Here we're gonna go about six to eight inches, just enough for that water to slow down a little bit before it drops again over this wall. This area cut down six to eight inches lower than that. We're gonna build in another, I don't know if you can see that little ridge, but right in there, we're gonna build another little drop that comes down into here. And then back up in there will be the other big drop that comes down into this level. So we've gotta fold all of this fabric back, the other liner back, then bring in more fabric, and then another liner back in over the top. And we'll just do that overlap coming right into here. And then we get to start plugging boulders again, kind of in throughout it. So much fun. strapping all of these boulders and they're underneath it. and then they bite my finger and then I have to go to the hospital.
the biggest rack we've set so far, even some bigger ones yet, but uh, it is definitely pushing that machine to its limit. Things are moving along just awesome. Intake bay has got about an inch of water in it so far. You can actually see some of the debris pulling in. You can see that little bit of movement right there. As it's coming in, it's starting to do that swirl around thing. The reason water is actually moving is because we have one of the pumps on. We have a 12 PN in here feeding about 12 jets and you can see them in different areas. And of course on a pond this size, we have a lot of jets because there's a lot of different dead areas. So this is gonna be that future patio area in here. We put a jet right here. Kind of see that water moving. We have another jet that'll get angled a little different when the water comes all the way up to this step. So the water sits about six inches higher than that step. This is the rustic staircase kind of coming down into there. We have miscellaneous jets throughout there. There's another jet that sits over there. There's actually gonna be a deck that cantilevers out over that about two feet and gets cut around those boulders to have more of a dock type feel. Things are working. I can't imagine how incredible the flow is gonna be in here when those two big 30,000 gallon per hour pumps are sitting on. So 60,000, almost 70,000 gallons of water an hour are gonna get pulled through this intake bay, go down through the aqua blocks, feed the pumps that sit back over in that house over there. And then you can see the waterfalls off in the distance. Things are really coming together. Jack and I have been just dropping big rock after big rock after big rock. And when I say big rock, they're big. A lot of these are five tons, seven tons, eight tons a piece. That's 16,000 pounds per rock. Um, this is gonna definitely be one of my favorite sections. Not just the waterfall, but this whole area in here. You can see how much we choked it down right here. As that water comes up another foot higher that water as it comes down through these waterfalls in through here is really going to just force all the debris and everything because we've choked it down so much and push it all the way back over to the intake bay so really no different than a pond with the skimmer box and the bio falls pump sits on one end water pushes from another side over in there and then you can see the waterfalls coming together the last rack we just set was that monster so we're going to get a lot of water to come off of that we brought this one in on an angle we're we're gonna fix that just a little bit. I think we'll bring that one more like this. And so as water drops off of that, it hits that and comes back down. And then you can see all of this stuff going on in here. So here, water is gonna drop. It's gonna come around that area, that area. We've got water coming from there, there, there on that one. And then after this, we'll get into the, the wetland filter. Not a bad backyard. 